Everybody seems to be starting a podcast today. You might be in the position where you want to start a podcast and you don't know where to start. In this video, I'm going to run through how you can start a podcast from spending zero dollars just using the equipment you already have all the way up to five thousand dollar plus in terms of equipment and where I think the sweet spot is for people who are starting out. How's it going, folks? My name's Marcus and on this channel, I like to talk about technology and anything that helps us to live happier, balanced, productive lives. So today I'm going to go through three tiers of podcasting. The first tier is what are the things that you can do with the things you have in your pocket right now to start a video podcast. I think there's about a $55 investment you need to make to get started if you want to get traction on a podcasting platform. Then I'm going to talk about mid-tier. Some of you might be ready to spend a little bit more than $55, maybe in the $200, $200 to $1,000 range. And then I'm going to talk through that equipment and the kind of quality and show you the quality you can get from the equipment in that range. And then finally, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the pro range setup, the setup I currently have here, to see if this is something that you want to be able to build towards. And also the order I would buy things in. Number one priority for a video podcast is getting your audio right. If your video isn't great, if your lighting isn't great, great, people will still watch or listen to a, an audio podcast if you nail your audio. So you always want to be upgrading your audio setup first. The second thing though after audio, which might surprise you, is focus on your lighting. Upgrading your lighting before you upgrade to a camera, even having an external camera, I would buy a light before I buy an external camera. And then the third thing obviously is upgrading your video equipment. So having, I've got different cameras at different tiers, base tier, mid tier and pro tier. So let's get stuck in with the base tier using your phone. So when I was researching how to start a podcast, a lot of people say just use the device you've got, which is the phone you have in your pocket. And that's what this sounds like. At the very minimum, you should be plugging in headphones. So let's see if you notice a difference between uh, what this audio sounds like versus this. So just using a microphone on its own, just the standard ones you get with your phone, makes a massive difference. The second thing to upgrade is your lighting. So here I'm using a desk lamp. It's just set at 45 degrees um, to give me some, in to make my face a little bit more interesting, to give me some contrast. And the last thing that you want is just a $15 stand to be able to get your phone in the position you want it to be. You want to be square on, sitting in front of something, a bookshelf or, or in a corner with your phone at the perfect level. Those are the types of things that keep your audience engaged and more inclined to listen to what you're saying as opposed to being distracted by dodgy audio and dodgy lighting and video. So this is my second tier setup. This is what I call mid tier, but it's at the low end of mid tier. So what I recommend you do first, going back to our rules, audio first. I would invest in buying a Blue Yeti condenser microphone for $99 and a set of Sennheiser headphones for another $99. That's a $200 spend. Now I'm assuming you have a laptop here because what you want to do is you are going to want to be able to run your Zoom calls on your laptop and I'm using the camera that's built into my laptop here using FaceTime HD. These microphones are great, but they pick up noise all around them. They're not very good at suppressing noise. If I was going to upgrade, the first thing I would do would be buy an LED light panel. Okay, and that's what this looked like. So I've got, I've got my panel LED up here at a 45 degree angle down on my face, giving me a nice shadow on this side. I've swapped the side that the shadow's on. So this here should have shown an increase in, in video quality, even using the same camera here. So it is an expensive upgrade, $230, but it makes it much more versatile. But if you want to go a step further and you do want to upgrade your camera, I would go for the RX100 Mark 7, which I have here. And that's what this looks like. So having an external camera here is the next upgrade you can get. These are expensive. You're going to spend about $1,000 for this camera, including a stand and some memory card and batteries. So it's a substantial investment to make in your podcast. And it's definitely not one of the first things I would do for a video podcast. So if this is what mid-tier looks like, Let's see what pro podcasters do. And this is more of what they call a pro tier. So talking through what this upgrade is, again with the principles, first thing is focus on audio. The Shure SM7B is a $399 microphone. It's a dynamic microphone. What that means is it's much less sensitive than a condenser microphone. So the Blue Yeti picked up a lot of noise around. This is much better at isolating those sounds and making sure you don't hear the air conditioner I have in the background or the fr fridge running here next to me. It's, it's able to just pick up my voice. But in order to be able to do that, you need to do a couple of things. One, you need to have a cloud lifter to be able to boost that signal coming through. And that's another $150 on top of the $400 microphone. And then you need, need to be able to record it somewhere. 
either by connecting to your computer through a, a Focus Scarlet, which is about a $200, $250 device, or by having an external recorder. And I've gone for the Zoom H6, and that Zoom H6 is another $350 device. So all in all, you're talking about $900 just for this upgrade in audio from the Blue Yeti. So you decide, go back in the video, listen to the Blue Yeti with these exact same headphones versus the Shure SM7B with these headphones and see, can you tell a clear difference between the two? Now, what I did say earlier was there is an in-between microphone. There's the Shure SM7B, which I'm using now, and there's the Blue Yeti. But there is a Shure MV7, which is about a $250 microphone, which can do both. So when you are doing the USB connection directly to your laptop, when you're at that early mid-tier stage, you can do that recording. It's a better microphone. But when you're ready to do this XLR connecting to an external through uh, using these cables, it's got one of those connections as well. So I've heard really good things about it. I've not used it myself, but if I was buying a microphone now, that's the one that I would go for. So moving on, the second thing I always upgrade is my lighting. What I have here is a much more moody light. I've got an Aperture Amaran 100D. These are about $200, you can get them on Amazon. And with that, I'm using an Aperture Light Dome Mini. And what that does is diffuses the light. Uh, it, it, it gives me much more control of the direction that that light is pointing. So it's not actually lighting up much of my background, as you can see here, but it is really lighting up my face. So hitting the things I wanted to hit and not the other things that I wanted to hit. What you're talking here though is, you're talking $200 for the light, you're talking about $250 for the light dome and about $30 for a stand. So almost $300 just to upgrade your lighting. So microphone, lighting, third thing camera. What I'm running here is I'm running this through my Canon R, EOS R. It's a full frame mirrorless camera. It's about $1,800 or it was when I bought it. And I'm using on that an EF lens. I'm using an RF to EF converter and a 24 millimeter, 1.4 millimeter uh, EF lens on this. So an, an older lens, but you can get it for about eight or $900 now, which is what I paid for it on eBay. So what that does is it changes a couple of things. I should be very much in focus here, but my background is, this is called a bokeh effect. What it's doing is it's actually pushing the background further away from me than the previous cameras were. So I'm still in the exact same position I was in when I shot on my uh, camera on my phone or when I was using the screen here, but the background does look more blurred. Look at this lighting, it's kind of harder to see what these things are. And if I really wanted to, I'd probably upgrade, I would put some little uh, LEDs in the background here as well just to make that background pop. Uh, let's do that now actually just to show you. Maybe something like that. So I've gone for kind of a pink hue here. We'll pretend we're teenagers for a while. But yeah, you can make your background more interesting. When you've got that kind of bokeh blur, you can really make things kind of stand out and just look whatever way you want. So if you're spending about $900 to upgrade your audio, you're spending another $450 on lighting, that's a lot of money. So on top of that, if you're doing another, I don't know, $3,000 to $3,500 on a camera and light, it very quickly brings you up into the four or $5,000 region. So with that all said, what do you think? I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you want me to do a deep dive on, if you want me to go into more detail on any one specific piece of this equipment or any one tier, I'd be happy to do it. Just let me know in the comments. Good luck.